what is the correct cue type for me as a player and for my pool table? Well, both parts of that question are really important because there are different pool cues for different pool games and there are different pool cues designed for different players. Um, so those are the two elements that kind of blend together to help you decide what cue you want. Now, this isn't an ultra in-depth cue guide. We'll, we'll cover that in a, in a different video, but this is really just to show you why these cues are made differently for the different pool games and also for the different players. So starting with the pool game, um, the key thing that is dictating why the pool cues are made differently is the cue ball. Now we'll mainly be looking at American tables versus British tables, but we will touch on snooker balls as, as well. So having a look at these cue balls that I've laid out on the table here, I'll just uh, lift these up. This is a British cue ball, that's one and seven eighths inch, um, so quite quite small, quite lightweight. Uh, then you go up to a snooker ball, that's two and one sixteenth inch there, and then you have a two and a quarter inch American cue ball. Now if I try and put those up to the camera, you can see the difference between these, these balls, but what you can't see is the difference in weight, and there is a significant weight difference between the American cue ball and the British uh, cue ball as well. So. Looking at those, if you take a, an average British cue, something like this, this is just a basic British two-piece pull cue, this is 57 inch uh, length, this is basically a full-size cue, then having a look at the tip, this is the key, key part of this, this tip will be generally uh, manufactured around either between about nine millimeters to 11 millimeters. Um, it's, it's all very much personal choice and people can have different cue tips however they like, but this is generally designed with that cue ball in mind. So as you can see, there you can see that that is an appropriate size to be able to control that cue ball. So when you're exerting your spins and things on the cue ball, you wouldn't want to have an overly large cue tip on that because you will lose that sort of finesse that you get from the finer tip. Um, so that gives you an idea of what you should be looking for on a British pool cue and its tip. Now this one is a simple two-piece cue with an ash shaft, but we will go into more depth on a different video on all the differences of uh, you know, the cue quality and things like that, but this is more just to explain why it's built in that way. Now, by comparison, if we pop that cue ball down, we lift up the American cue ball and I get an American pool cue, you can see there's quite a dramatic difference in the tip of this particular cue. So these are manufactured generally with a 13 millimeter tip. Now sometimes you see them with a 12 mil and even down to an 11 mil, but generally the manufacturers put a 13 mil tip on. And again, when you look at it next to the pool ball, you can see, again, it's an appropriate size to be able to control a pool, a cue ball of that size. Now, when you look at the American tip, you can see there's a slight difference here. Where on a British cue you see a brass ferrule, here you've got a composite or a plastic uh, ferrule here. Now that's the, the part that sits behind the cue tip itself. Now this is designed to take some of the impact that you get when you're actually playing American pool, because with the size of cue ball and the power that you're exerting through American pool, there's a lot of force going through the ends of these cues, and if they weren't designed in this way, if you were, for example, to play with a British uh, pool cue and play American pool uh, regularly, eventually you will start to notice potentially that the, the, the cue actually starts to split or to strain at the ends. Now, these particular cues where you had an ash shaft generally on, on your average British pool cue, let's say, uh, these ones use a maple shaft. Um, American pool cues generally split in the middle. Um, and they, they are designed really to deal with the, the power and forces going through those American uh, pool balls. So straight away, this helps you divert depending on what pool table you play on and what you may have purchased. Now, as we said, there's two elements to choosing cues. So it's not just the game, there's also the personal element. Um, depends on what experience you have. It depends on your size and depends on your height, for example. Um, so you do get various pool cue sizes um, to accommodate that. So this is one sort of category of how pool tables uh, find their niche in the market. So, I mean, right down to absolute junior cues like this. Now these are, uh, this is a 36 inch cue and this is designed for kids. Um, it's really lightweight. It means for their, for their arm span when they're bridging, it's appropriate in size. And also it's just not too difficult for them to kind of get used to and move around. Um, so apart from that, you can then go to a medium size cue. You may go for something like a, a 48 inch cue, something like this. So this is a, a lovely little cue. And um, again, it's a two piece, it's an ash shaft and it's got the appropriate tip for British pool. Um, 
But this is really good for players, um, you know, who may be sort of like a medium average size. And um, again, just it's it's what's comfortable for you, for your span um, and the weight of the cue. Now, full size cues, you're looking at something like this. This is a 57 inch cue. Um, and if this isn't big enough for you, this is, I mean, you do get uh, slightly larger cues than this. They do manufacture larger cues, but this is your basic full size cue. Uh, you can also apply a mini buff to it. So if you're reaching for a shot or if you're using a rest or something like that in snooker, uh, then this gives you just that little bit extra uh, and a bit more power and things like that. So the, the mini buff can extend a full size cue as well. So hopefully that gives you an idea of, of the different types or sizes of cue that might be on the market. Now, very briefly, as I said, it's not going to go into too much depth about the sort of the woods that are used and hand splicing and machine splicing and things like that. Um, but I do want to have a quick look at um, the different joints on the cue. So with this one, you can see it is a three quarter joint cue. Now this means that the cue will come apart at this position. Um, and although it's a very popular way. Um, it does mean you need a larger cue case to carry the cue around. Whereas the cues that split in the middle, these ones come into two parts, and this means that it is a little bit more uh, simple to carry home. If you're on the bus going to your favorite pool hall or something like that, then you generally need a much smaller cue case to carry around. Uh, some people really like to go for a single piece cue. That's worth looking out for. A lot of snooker players will say that they want to go for that. They don't want to have the joints in the middle. But again, you're talking about a cue that's 57 inches and you're kind of carrying that around. So that's why you have these different ways that the cue will actually break down. It's, it's, it's for convenience um, and to be able to, you know, uh, transport the cue around. Um, apart from that, you might want to consider the queuing room you've got around your table as well. Um, again, those queue sizes uh, also can be dictated by the room size that you've got, as well as your size, your height, etc. Um, but hopefully that gives you an idea of the sort of range and why these queues are made differently. And uh, hopefully it gives you a bit of information to help direct you towards your queue purchase.